Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be setting up the project within Unreal Engine 4 and the camera system for our Endless Runner game. Now one thing I would like to mention before we do go any further is that this game is going to be mobile. If you want to develop it for PC you can do as well and all the steps are going to be exactly the same but we are going to be developing this for Android and iOS and as such we are going to be setting up our project in that way. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and open up the latest version of Unreal Engine 4 that you have. In my case, this is Unreal Engine 4.19. Now within here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and create myself a new project. And this new project is going to be using the third person template. And the reason why I'm using this is just because it gives us a basis for a third person camera. And as you see in most sort of endless runner games your camera is going to be directly behind the player and that in itself is third person. We're also going to be developing this game entirely within blueprints so make sure it is the blueprint version you're using. Down at the bottom here when you're creating your project you want to make sure this is chosen for either mobile or tablet. In this case we are working with mobile devices and then for the quality just leave that to maximum and we are also going to include the starter content. We are going to give this the name Endless or Virtus Runner. Let's give it the name Virtus Runner. So Virtus runner and then with this we are going to go ahead and create the project. Now creating this project can take a couple of minutes it just depends on the performance of your computer but once it has gone ahead and loaded up what we're going to do is dive in and start working on that camera system. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll be with you in a second. Okay so once your engine has loaded up you should have something that looks a bit like this. When we go ahead and press play you should be able to sort of move around and it's going to allow you to have all these controls that you don't really want to have for an endless runner. What I mean by that is you don't really want to be able to move left or right with your mouse or anything like that and we also don't want these joystick controls to look around either. So what we're going to do is get the camera in the position we need it in which is going to be a little bit further back and then we are also going to be disabling some of those look controls as well. So what I'm going to do then to do this is I'm going to show the sources panel within my content browser within the bottom left hand corner of my screen here and then I'm going to go to my blueprints folder and open up my third person character. This blueprint is going to contain all of the inputs and all of the controls for the character that we're going to have and that is why I am opening it up. Now the main control that I'm going to get rid of are going to be the look things. So for this with the look based stuff you can see here we've got the gamepad inputs. This is for turning the camera, we do not need this at all, so I'm just going to go over this whole comment box and just delete it so that we can no longer do that. And then the same goes for the mouse input in here as well, we do not need that so we are just going to delete it. And now if we compile and then go back into the viewport and play our game, we should no longer be able to move it with our mouse, which is exactly what you want it to do. So for actually setting up the camera system, it's really straightforward. Now a blueprint does have two sides to it. You have the code side, which we opened up and is in the event graph that we're in at the moment. You also have the physical representation and all of this is within the viewport. And within the viewport, you can see the different actors within that blueprint and you can modify them from there. So for me, in this case, I am trying to set up a camera view which is similar to a endless runner like Temple Run or Subway Surfers. And with that, you are gonna find the camera is gonna be further back so you can see a little bit further ahead. So I'm gonna move this. I'm just gonna quickly click my follow camera, move this back a bit, and then I'm also going to move it up above the player so that you can see further in, uh, further ahead because if it's directly below that character you are going to have that character obstructing your vision. So if we go ahead and compile this and then press play what you should have now is a camera that looks a bit like this 
and you can see it's starting to look a bit more like an endless runner. Now bear in mind, it's kind of, it is kind of chopping off the feet a little bit, so I'm going to move it down just a bit, compile it, and then press play. And really what you guys want to do here with this is just take a moment or take a couple of minutes to get the ideal camera view that you want. So just move forwards and backwards until you get the look and the style that you're after. For me, my feet are still cut off, so I am going to move it down a little bit and I'm also going to move it forwards a little bit and then compile it. And like I said, I just want you guys to keep adjusting this until you get the look and the style that you are after. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get you to sh I'm going to show you guys how you can get your character to run forwards endlessly. And this is probably going to be one of the most important pieces of code that you're going to need. So going back into our third person character, go to your event graph, and then where you've got your movement input, you'll have a little comment box that says movement input. You will have an input axis move forward event. Now, as of right now, that is basically using the keyboard. We don't want that to be the case of moving forwards. We want it to do it all of the time. So I'm going to delete this event that I've got here. And instead, what I'm going to do is use the event tick node. And what that's going to do is every frame, it's going to fire off whatever is hooked up into it. And in this case, it is at the movement input for going forwards. So I'm going to right click and I'm just going to type in event tick. And then with this event tick, I'm going to drag out from the execution pin and hook this up to add movement input. And what this is going to do now is it is going to move forwards to the scale value of one every tick or every frame. So if I compile this now, press play, and you can see our dude is now running forwards endlessly. You're not really going to be able to see it too much at the moment because our track is not endless. He's going to get cut off but the procedurally generated tiles is going to be something for a later video. But as of right now, we've got our camera system set up and we have also got our character running endlessly. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for today's video. Make sure you move on to the next video where we're going to be bringing our game to life a little bit further. But for now guys, once again, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.